Many of us have our opinions about what our town and city centres look like, but have you ever stopped to notice how they sound? Well, a team of researchers here at WMG are analysing a whole range of sounds and the impact that each one has on us. They eventually hope to make soundscape an integral part of urban planning. Up until now, we've concentrated very much on sounds associated with vehicles and looking at trying to help manufacturers design the sounds to be most appealing to customers, whether it be sporty or exciting or luxurious or refined. We're now trying to apply the same principles and methods to public spaces to help designers, architects, planners look at a public space and rather considering sound as noise, to look at the positive aspects, to try and enhance the experience for the people who inhabit those spaces. I think things can be improved. I think, for instance, if we consider this fountain, the level is quite high, but people might find there's an air of tranquility around it. They, it also might help to mask any unpleasant sounds around. What we want to look at is, is how we look at the entire soundscape, so all the sounds that we find within a public space, and to try and look at the combination. Now, what is positive will be different for different people. If you're there just to relax, you may want it tranquil and quiet and not interfering. But if you're a visitor, you may want it to be interesting and vibrant. And we need to understand what's positive in different places. So it may depend on who you are, what you're doing, and what the purpose of that space is. Well, it's basically my job to do the data collection and the experiments for the Positive Soundscapes project. When we want to get people's opinions and perceptions of sound, it's quite hard to do it actually in the, in the environment because it's quite unpredictable, you don't know when the sounds are going to happen. So what it's good to be able to do is to capture the sounds, um, which is what we do using our, our digital handheld computer. We can then take those sounds back to the laboratory edit them, mix them, so we've got just the right amount of different types of sounds, and we can then play those back in our laboratory, in our listening room, to get people's feedback on them. OK, we're back now in our listening room in WMG, which is an acoustically damped room, so it's free from external influences outside, so it's nice and quiet. We've got all the recordings that we did out in the field. Um, we now bring them back. Um, we, we have to take them off of our handheld recording device, put them onto the computer, and then we use our, our automotive software to actually edit the, the sounds and then we can play them back in the listening room here to people. We can do up to six participants at a time. We can either get them to, to perhaps choose which sound they prefer, so we might play them two different sounds and ask them do you prefer A or B. Or sometimes it's, it's, that's not as useful as actually finding out what, why they prefer something. So we also do quite open-ended questionnaires as well where we can ask people to perhaps explain how the sound makes them feel. An example here is a questionnaire where someone's listened to a sound and it's made them feel hurried, anxious, alone and stressed. One of the most important things that we have to consider when we do um, listening tests in the listening room is the context and the interactivity that we can provide to the participants because obviously in here it's very removed from real life so we have to make sure that the results that we get from the experiments would, in, would actually match what you'd get if you went out in the field. So to do that we, we try and show as much context as possible so we can show images to actually go with the sounds. The research started at the end of 2006. It, it's funded through the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council and we're working in collaboration with four other academic institutions who bring uh, a multidisciplinary approach to the problem. So we're working with Lancaster who bring psychology, Manchester Met who bring health science, Salford acoustics and social science and I think most interestingly the University of the Arts who bring a very interesting perspective. First and foremost we want to make sure that everybody involved in the design of town centres, public spaces in general, are aware of sound as being possibly positive. So we want them to look at the positive aspects. Beyond that we then obviously like to improve their design and actually have a, a better experience for the people that inhabit those spaces. I guess in most town centres traffic noise is one of the big contributors to the soundscape. And I think we're well placed here at WMG with our experience with the automotive industry. But things are going to change a lot. We're moving to more hybrid vehicles and even pure electric vehicles. So not only will the, the character of the sound of individual vehicles change, you'll be getting more motor whirs, but also there's the potential for vehicles to almost be completely silent. And that brings in safety issues. Because even though traffic noise can be considered annoying, it's actually warning people that there's traffic about. The Soundscapes work uh, at Warwick uh, as part of the big project is running for at least another two years. 
But one thing that WMG uh, is focusing on is very much the area of healthcare. And we've had a lot of interest from local hospitals, clinicians and managers about applications of our work in the hospital environment. So we're looking at to see whether we can apply some of the principles with specifically to improving life for patients and clinicians in the environments of hospitals.